Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My wife, Cindy, my beautiful bride, Cindy, she always says, make sure you start off your show with the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. So we'll do that. Ake makua, ke keiki, ame ke ohana hemalele. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, coming to you from Waikiki Beach, right over where the altar is of St. Augustine's Church. We're just look right down at the altar here, out to the beautiful sea. Uh, so glad to glad to be glad to have you here with us. We have a real cool guest with us today. His name is Jared Fergarelli. We're going to talk story about his reversion to the Catholic Church and and his love for the Lord. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Why is it the Bear Wozniak Adventure? Because each of us ha- are living an adventure. It's kind of like Louis L'Amour said in one of his Western novels, Adventure just means things went really bad, <laughs> but, but you know, we know our life is a life of adversity, but I want to show you guys my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone by Sophia. Um, I love this book and every book you, you write, you love, but this one is a uh, hit number is hit has been bumping along number five on the, on Christian books for men. So it's something that uh, mama bears, you can be really, it, People line up for this book when we go out and speak, where there's never a moment when we're not signing books. So this is something men who wouldn't normally read a book, if they read the first chapter, they'll read the whole book. Because it's like we're talking to them in the way men talk with each other. Uh, the 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? So men would love to, to, uh, to get this book. There's one We have a man like that here with us today. His name is uh, Gerard Figarelli. And Gerard, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Bear. It's a pleasure to be here. Wish I was actually there. <laughs> yeah. Well, where are you right now? You're in Texas. I'm in, in- uh, a suburb of Houston, Cypress, Texas. Cypress, Texas. Uh, well, th- that's where we met our great friend, Grady Dyke. That's right. Uh, we were somewhere in Louisiana, and he said, I want to go with you guys. And so mm-hmm. we hooked up with him, and yeah. we rode through the rain and into the the west, the east side of Houston. And I just remember... Uh, leaving Houston. When we went to the mass there with Father Mark Goring at his mm-hmm. charismatic center there. He's up in Canada now. But we went there and uh, as we're riding out with Father Mark, we're heading towards the um um the I don't know the the way outside of the edge of Texas. Uh um there was a there was a a highway patrolman, you know, a cop, a motorcycle mm-hmm. cop cop came and visited us, sat right next to me at mass. And I realized they just wanted us to get out of town as soon as we could. We were getting kicked out of town by the <laughs> by the by the Johnny Law. But no, he's a great guy, and they and they actually thank God because they led us through all these circuitous freeways and got us headed out towards Del Rio. So great time. We love, we love Houston. I'm one of my best friends, Tim McCormick, lives there too. I, and of course, you met Grady Dyke. Grady's um, become so, a good friend. I didn't know Grady had any friends. Well, I mean, somebody, I mean, there is some money involved here. Exchanging well, hands, but. <laughs> well, no, we love Grady Dyke. But before we get started, I just got to say to you, sick and bears. Sick and bears. Yeah. yeah. So why, why tell the audience why we say that? Well, because we're both uh, Baylor Bears. Uh, we both just love Waco so much. We have nothing to do with David Koresh, but uh, we love <laughs> Waco and we spend a little time in, in, um, in Waco. I was there from... 05 to 09 getting a, a master's degree and um and then i moved down to the houston area from there well you know they're, they're famous now for that for the magnolia area and i forget the couple that does the home remodel chip and joanna so, yeah uh, chip and joanna so they've kind of taken uh they've kind of taken that old uh black eye off of the off of them and i i i lived in waco texas i moved there from i just got my driver's license i was a surfer living in santa cruz california <laughs> at the height of the beach boy era and my parents moved me to Waco, Texas, and they're just like, oh, oh, That's I was a little different than Santa Cruz. I, I was I, I was lost as a yeah. surfer there. People didn't people met me there. They were kind of oh, cool guy from California, you know, all that. They didn't know how much I was suffering. Now there's a surf, there's a wave, uh, the wave pool there. People can surf. Yeah, I mean, there's a real right, not just yeah. a wave pool, but a great wave, surf spot. But if that had been there when I was there, I couldn't have afforded to go anyway. So 
It was tough. Uh, but I want to say this. You went to Baylor and I went to Baylor too uh, for, for the, for my, I went for my CPA uh, license there. Um, but I found at Baylor the most beautiful Christians, beautiful, beautiful Christians. How about, how about you? Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. I did. I, I sound so hesitant. I did find a number of those. I, I did have an an interesting conversation one time with a with a university chaplain where I was telling him about how I had done my undergrad at Stephen F. Austin, and now I was at uh, Baylor University doing a, a second master's degree. And he said, "This is the university chaplain at Baylor University. I won't name him." Um, he said, uh, "You know the difference between Stephen F. Austin and Baylor? Stephen F. Austin's a Christian school." Oh, and, that's sad to hear. It well, was very I, sad like to hear. But he was a little bit cynical about the school. Uh, I met some great Christian people. There are some great churches. I still have friends. We still have lots of friends from our days in Waco. So I'm being a little bit uh, facetious about it. Just kind of one of those stories that you hear, you know, how the sausage is made kind of story. Well, all I know is like when I was there, I met so many wonderful Christians. Yeah. And I was raised Catholic, but I had never really met anybody that talked about having a personal relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I had an experience there uh, in a... Uh, when I was 19, I remember I'd lived my life that as young as it was, no drinking, no wine, woman in song. I was a virgin and all. I was living my life as well as I could, but I really didn't know Jesus. And these people talked about knowing Jesus. And I remember I went to a philosophy class, yeah. which I know that you're, uh, you, you've, uh, you studied under Francis. Is it Beckwith? How do you say his name? Uh, yeah, Frank Beckwith. Mm -hmm. I, I, went to a, I went to a philosophy class there where there was a room of about a dozen people dozen students mm -hmm. filled with all these beautiful books. We went through all of the great, all the great philosophers. Yeah. I don't remember Augustine or Aquinas coming up. And I just remember going through this philosophy class and just thinking I tried Catholicism. I had become a martial artist and gone the Buddha route, mm. tried that out. I tried philosophy and to me, it all fell short. And I just was kind of like, Lord, if that's all there is, then why not wine, women and song? And that's the yeah. moment when I, I, uh, fortunately, um, had the encounter with, um, I uh, particip was invited to go to a Catholic charismatic prayer meeting mm. and I experienced this incredible uh, infusion of God's love and became mm. a, a strong uh, Catholic Christian. But eventually I, I really didn't get grounded in the faith. And so I went into the non-denominational world. So wondering yeah. about you, but, but, but you and I have, you and I have traveled that for the, you went, you were steeped in philosophy there. You knew that you knew yeah. Beckwith there. So now, now that's our commonality. Tell us about your own your own journey. Sure. Um, now, I would say now, if you went to Baylor now and were a philosophy student, you would get uh, Aquinas out of a fire hose. There's a mm. lot of Thomists in that uh, philosophy department now, so it's mm. it's a wonderful philosophy department. So I was raised Catholic, uh, raised in a, a very just a great Catholic family. Um, we. Uh, you know, we went to church every Sunday. I, as a teenager, kind of lost interest. And in, even after my confirmation, my my first 10 months after confirmation looked probably the exact opposite of what a person's life should look like after confirmation. It was filled with teenage rebellion and, and uh, all kinds of uh, silliness and a lot of unfortunate incidents in my life during that time. I eventually ended up joining the Navy at age 19. Uh the only time I've actually been to Hawaii is on my way back from the Philippines mm -hmm. when I, I spent two years in the Philippines. And the reason why I spent two years in the Philippines is because I was so bad at geography that when I, it came time to select my orders in, in the Navy, I, I picked the Philippines because I confused the Philippines with the Catalina Islands off the coast of California. Mm. And um, so I ended That's up- That's kind of bad. That's really bad. And I hope you weren't a navigator. <laughs> well- well, I wasn't, but I tell you, I have learned my geography since then uh, much better. So, uh, but I ended up in the Philippines. It was instrumental in my life. It was in the Philippines, I think, that God really began to stir up my heart. Even though I had been baptized, received my first communion, I had uh, I had been confirmed. There wasn't anything real spiritual going on in my life. I didn't have that personal relationship like you like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And it was after I came home from the Philippines at a Baptist church that I was invited to at a, a passion play that I went very begrudgingly. And during this passion play, I really didn't even know what was going on. I was very ignorant of everything that was happening until the resurrection scene when I became very, very convicted that 
First of all, I knew at that moment Jesus was truly alive, that it was real, and I knew that I was really a sinner. And I had um, what I would you know, call a very powerful conversion experience that night in 1989. I was 22 and uh, began, began to follow Christ, but I left the Catholic Church. And uh, part of that was because I found in the Baptist Church what I had not found in the Catholic Church. A lot of this, and I'm not blaming Vatican II over this, it's just some of the some of the stuff that was not happening in the churches in the 70s and 80s was not very well catechized. I left the church. I found in the Baptist church, you know, a lot of um, fellowship and prayer and Bible study and a love for Christ. And I also got a lot of misinformation about Catholicism. If you've ever run across mm -hmm. Lorraine Bettner's <laughs> book, Roman Catholicism. That was it. That, that was, was it. Known as the anti-Catholic yeah. Bible. And it it ruined me as far as my and it's And it's all straw. It's all straw men. Everything she it, says. Every bit of it. Every argument is false, but yeah, no. So I know I went to Baylor and when I, I, I and I love the Christians, it's wonderful, still love them, still have wonderful relationships with them. But there's quite, you know, if, if, if that's what I believed, what they say, mm -hmm. I believed, if that's what I believed. I wouldn't be Catholic either, but there was a time of confusion in my life. I didn't know yeah. about, about Holy script. I didn't know about Holy scripture and solo fide and all that, but we're getting to, we're getting, we're, we got to get, take a little break here. Gerard, where can people find you? The Midair Fortress on YouTube. The Midair Fortress. I have a big, just began a YouTube station a little while ago, but um, getting it going. So right there. Sounds like a great show. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I want to invite everybody to go uh, to go to our YouTube channel, Spirit of Adventure. It's actually, it's Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure YouTube channel because a lot of cool stuff is happening there. Uh, we have our our long ride home television series is there. Mm -hmm. We've just at, we're just activated it so you can view it on our channel instead of on Prime Video or on EWTN. Our motorcycle reality TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear, uh, and also my sons have done this incredible stuff. They've done about a hundred of these sixty second shorts, which are really arrows in your quiver. They're great little sixty second excerpts from from one of my books or excerpts from our TV show that you can share with your friends. And it's just a great evangelistic tool because it's cool stuff. Uh, the, all of the, all of the um, excerpts from long ride home are all cowboy themed. And then we have the motorcycle TV show and other things like that. So go there. You can get those. You can, you can share those. 
Uh, and also um, our new TV show. Uh, when we did Long Ride Home here in Hawaii, it was our last 11 episodes. Um, we uh, we had done them all over the country. But when we filmed the last, the last uh, season, the fourth season, my wife Cindy started showing up in some of the episodes. And the mama bears went crazy. They go, you know, we need to see more of Cindy. And I agree. So Cindy and I have a new show, uh, Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Mm. And we're here in the islands. We're having fun in the sun. You know, we tandem surf. I met her. I do a the thing where I lift her up in the air when we surf and we, we sail, uh, we, we, we scuba dive, we hike here in the islands. So we're going to bring you to the islands so you can really enjoy, enjoy our experience here. We we're leaving right now, uh, to go sail on our boat spirit of adventure out of the Caribbean for about six weeks. Uh, the retreats that we give out there on our boat, we're just going to be bringing this to you. It's meant to be entertaining and meant to be enjoyable, but, but that's just meant to draw people in so that we can share with them the truth of Catholic teaching excuse me, the truth of Catholic teaching and the gospel mm. and the Amen. inspiration from the Lord. So Mama Bears especially, you'll like it, but it's meant for everybody. Uh, Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy uh, uh, on our YouTube channel, or you can go to spiritofadventuretv.com and find out more there. Our guest is Gerard Figarelli. Um, He's Grady Dyke's friend. For those of you who love Grady, I don't know mm -hmm. why you'd love him, but those of you who love Grady Dyke, he's really the real, real, real biker on our show, actually. <laughs> um, he said, you got to have Gerard Figarelli on our show. He's a Catholic revert. So we've been talking yeah. story. So go ahead. Let's hear, let's hear more of your, 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 your journey that you, you were on. Well, thank you. Well, uh, so I, so I, you know, I had this experience at this Baptist church, like I mentioned, it changed my life. It got me, I really went from darkness to light, from aimlessness to purpose. So, I mean, there was a lot of wonderful things that, that happened. And, uh, but part of the negative is that I got a lot of bad information about the Catholic Church and ended up leaving the church, renouncing the church, became bitterly anti-Catholic for a number of years until about the year 2000, 2001, when I went to an evangelical seminary. I had already been a pastor at this point for a while. I'd been involved in lots of ministry, but I needed pa uh, seminary training. And I happened to go to an evangelical seminary that focused on St. Thomas Aquinas's philosophy. Uh-oh. And you may not, you may not think that such a thing exists, but it actually does. It's rare, but um, but I went and studied under Dr. Norman Geisler, who is extremely well known amongst evangelicals, and even broader than that, much more ironic spirit towards Catholicism. And he taught us Thomas Aquinas, and so it kind of rubbed the, the edge off that uh, anti-Catholicism. But at the same time, I had. There wasn't a thought in my mind that I would ever come back to the Catholic Church. From there, I, I went to Baylor. I studied under Frank Beckwith for a number of years while I was there. A philosophy professor who in turn became, he, re, he, he was a revert too, right? While I was there, I was actually his teaching assistant. He was the president of the Evangelical Theological Society. And in 2007, he announced his reversion to the Catholic Church. He, I, didn't I mean, know he was that... extremely high profile. Oh my gosh, it's so, so amazing. So it was amazing. great. Um, a little confusing to me at the time because I was like, what's going on here? But uh, you know, he's he was he's always been gracious and kind. And I've I've learned so much from Frank. He's one of the if if you have any listeners that really want to get into pro-life philosophical apologetics, they need to read Frank Beckwith. Mm -hmm. He is the top in the field, and uh he's he's just done an amazing job answering the, the pro-choice, pro-abortion arguments philosophically with clarity and uh he he answers the best arguments that are out there and and shows how the pro life kind of an Aqu is sort of an aquinas thing you know yeah. answer the, yeah. the real arguments and you know exactly the, the thing is i think the catholic church i say this uh to my sons i you know yeah. I, I think the catholic church is the thinking man's religion yeah it, you don't have to be a thinking man to be a you don't have to be one of those intellectuals be to be catholic we can be the uh, catholic church is the universal catholic church but men who are really true, really seeking truth, they kind of go orthodox. They find their way through to orthodoxy and then eventually to the Catholic Church. Well, it's kind of what I happened have, with me. Yeah, tell us. So I uh, I left Baylor. I really had a heart to be a pastor. That's what I wanted to be. I, I, I was in a PhD program, but I, I really didn't want to be an academic. I wanted to be a pastor. And God mm. provided the opportunity back in my hometown of Houston for me to be a pastor in a church in the Sugarland area, not too far from Katy, where, where Grady is. I know where that is. Yeah. Yeah. And um, 
And, you know, for about eight years, I was a pastor, a full-time pastor. And that was what I, and and it was, there was a, a lot of good there, a lot of fruitfulness, a lot of trying times. And uh, we would take too much time to go through all that, but ended up having to leave ministry in 2017. And for about six years, my wife and I really kind of wandered. We went to, I, I think I counted at 15 different churches. Well, did you, did you go through a church split? Uh, we went through a church split. We did. Yeah. It's so painful. I, I mean, I, yeah. I was in a situation where I was a youth, youth a youth pastor at a non-denominational church, and um, I would call it pastoral abuse. I finally had to leave. There was this sort of oppression. Um, and then you would see instances where churches split, and often it's because of sin or a theological difference, and everybody kind of has their own interpretation of the Bible. And yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it, it, it's a very painful, painful thing, to, especially as a pastor. And this was kind of a combination of all of that. It was it was sin. It, there was, you know, obviously difference of, of opinion about how to address it. But there was some very deep corruption in the leadership that I I was unaware of when I became aware of it. I, you know, I couldn't couldn't mm. stand idly by. I tried my best to, to deal with it. And I'm not saying I did everything right, but it just became an untenable situation. So my wife and I wandered, but we we were we insisted we are going to be in church every Sunday. Some really bad things happened to us through that, but we knew this was men that were doing the bad things. God is good. We never once doubted our uh, who you know God's goodness, His faithfulness. We never lost confidence or trust. In fact, if anything, our confidence and our trust in God grew because you know when the Bible describes men, it says the truth about men, and it says some of the things that you, you know you think could that possibly be true. And then when you realize, wow, men do actually act like that. that Even the sex. actually bolstered my confidence in the scriptures <laughs> yeah, right. and in God. Yeah. You look at what it's, David did, and yet he was called God, and Abraham, for that matter, but they were called God's friend. When I was just reading this morning, um, well, actually this afternoon in the Liturgy of the Hours about, I, I forget what psalm it is, 68 maybe, but where David is, is uh, and it's a Christological psalm where he's talking about if it was an enemy that betrayed me, be one thing, but mm. it was my friend. We used to go to the house yes. of God together. And we we experienced yes. that very deeply. That, that betrayal. There, there's nothing that hurts worse than that. I mean, that really, but it was you, my trusted friend, that we used to go to that. that I've been there, exactly. man. I know what you mean. It's hard. Exactly. Betrayal is difficult. But thank God, God had a plan in all of that. You know, he did. Uh, no one was more surprised than my wife and I when a year ago we we popped into my old Catholic church, the one that why? I was why, why nostalgia. That was our per our reason was just nostalgia. We were like, you know, we're in that side of town and let's just pop in there. Obviously, God had different designs. We our our you know explicit motivations were, you know, it's where I used to live, let's just pop in at a nostalgia. I kid you not. And but obviously there was preparatory work that God had done in our lives. I was hungering for a, a you know a faith that was rooted in church history. I got tired of going to a church where a pastor never referred to anybody past, you know, maybe 1975. There's no there's no connection with the the body of Christ universal. No uh there's no tradition. There's no no liturgy, and I was just hungry for these things without really knowing I was hungry. For yes, those I know. I understand that exactly. Exactly, I went through that. Yes. So we go to this mass, and we're stunned, and we're oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. We have to do this. Don't you love cliffhangers? Yes. Well, I'm a radio guy. I know about cliffhangers. So we got to take a break. So why don't we do it here? Because this is when it's going to get really good when we come back. So we're talking Sounds with good. Gerard Figu Figurelli, a revert. There's nothing more dangerous than a, a revert. <laughs> uh, and and how can they find you, Gerard? Midair Fortress on YouTube. Midair, I, I got all find one out word. Midair Fortress. When we come back. You'll, when we have a chance, you'll tell us about the meaning of that. All right. uh, Gerard Figurelli. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. 
experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure, with Bear and Cindy. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Providers and protectors. The cowboy heroes that I admired, they were providers and they were protectors. Though they had a stirring or a desire for a woman, you did not see them lusting after women and most certainly sex was for after marriage. They respected women and they carefully protected a woman's honor. Though they were often slow in coming to love, when they did love a woman, they were all in. Buy 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? at schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest is Gerard Figarelli. He's talking about his reversion to the Catholic faith. Um, and I know you, 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 you uh, I know that feeling of, I almost, when I was not in the Catholic Church and I'd heard all those terrible teachings and I believed them about the Catholic Church, all the straw arguments, straw mm -hmm. man arguments. Um, and, but I remember there was just something about, uh, I don't want to come and see some guy talk for an hour and I don't want to be entertained. <laughs> I want to, you know, there was just, I don't know. It just didn't feel, I felt a little, little bit like it didn't quite fit me. Yeah. And then I went back and then I found my way back to the church largely because of Stephen Ray's book, Crossing the Tiber, who's yeah, yeah. and now a good friend of mine, by the way. I mean, I'm just so, well, life's so cool. But um, so tell us then you, you out of what you thought was kind of whim, but was the leading of the yeah. Holy Spirit, you found yourself going to the Catholic church that you went to in your youth, or was this a church that was in your neighborhood? It was not in our neighborhood, but close. It was the church I was confirmed in at age 16. Oh, okay. And that's uh, wow. where my, you know, I grew up in this church. Um, okay. As far as the hour long sermons, I could say now, mea culpa, mea culpa. <laughs> that was you. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I'm guilty of that. Of um, So, uh, but well, that, makes that, that makes you a podcaster. That makes you a podcaster. <laughs> uh, my wife is she she says with my my youtube station she says i'm doing a lot better of just getting to the point because i kind of had a hard time winding it winding it up when i preach so you got to know when to drop the mic there you go um <laughs> so we go to this we go to mass on march 18th 2023 without any idea what we're walking into and it, it's just a beautifully haunting experience that's just the best way for me to describe it i had a lot of objections bear i mean they meant you know, the the act of contrition uh therefore we ask uh blessed mary ever virgin and i'm like what are you talking about uh you know the the saint michael's prayer at the end the whole sacrifice of the mass i still found offensive uh, i still had a protestant mind here but we were drawn we were compelled and so we did what every convert and revert does we started buying books and and we started uh by uh i mean i think by the this was march 18th we started buying books within a few days by april 26th i had i had probably 75 books i had bought and i'd read half of them by then <laughs> tell tell us some of the ones that stand out i'll give you i'll make it even better i'll tell you my top five i've i've ordered the the top five books that really drew me back was number mm -hmm. one 
or, or uh, reverse order. Number five was Jimmy Aiken's book, the Cat, the the Bible is a Catholic book. Yeah, because, that was a good one for you to read. Well, I'll tell you a story. I, we had some very good Catholic friends. We had a conversation one day while I was still an evangelical about the Bible, and and she said, "You know, we wrote the Bible," and I was stunned at the ignorance of this Yale University graduate to think that the Catholics wrote the Bible. I was with a Protestants, this is our this is our intellectual yeah. property. You Catholics can't find a Bible. Well, Jimmy Aiken straightened me out on that. And uh, he's and awesome. It's, isn't and he? it's a very accessible, readable book. So that was number five, because obviously, as a Protestant, you've got to you've got to know you got to know that you, where the Bible comes from. The Bible is part of the tradition. It's not opposed to tradition. Um, and we wouldn't have the Bible if not for the Catholic Church. We wouldn't have the New Testament. We wouldn't have a table of contents. We wouldn't have anything. We wouldn't have anything. It would have been gone. It would have been gone. Yeah. Number four, and this is where I know you've studied the early church fathers. I know you've read extensively, and that's dangerous territory all for the, a Protestant. All those books behind me? I know. Commentaries in the early church. Yes. Yeah, and if anybody just needs a place to start, I recommend Joe Heschmeyer's book, The Early Church Was the Catholic Church, which mm -hmm. just opened my eyes. The early church believed in baptismal regeneration. The early church believed in Eucharistic realism. The early church had bishops and said, "If you're if you're not doing it with the bishop, then you're not you're not a part of the you're church. Not, you're not part Ignatius. of the church." Yeah, I had never heard these things. I had actually thought I knew something about church history. I, I knew nothing because I had a very curated view of the. Oh, the early fathers. well said. Well yeah. said. Yes. So that was, and then number three is a book I'm sure you've read. Um, it, Brant Petrie's book. The Jesus and the Jewish Roots of the Eucharist. Oh, beautiful. I have it in my library, yeah, for sure. Oh, uh, this book changed my life. I mean, obviously, for an evangelical, you read John chapter 6, and you come to John 6, 63, where it says, the, the words I've spoken to you are spirit and life. The, the, the flesh profits nothing. And you say, that's it. It's all a metaphor. Everything he just said really is just a graphic way of saying, you need to believe in me. You need to believe in me. And... uh but I always had a fascination with the wilderness generation. And when I learned through reading Brant Petrie's book that Jesus was the, I never really knew he was the new Moses. I already understood that. And, but I never really made the connection of him. He's leading a new Exodus, the, exactly what first century Jews were expecting. And Brant Petrie asked this question. So what food would this new Moses provide for the journey, the Exodus journey? And Jesus answered that in John chapter six, and you know the first time I went to a you mean a you mean when he said what what do you was, mean he answered that you mean when he said I am the what I am I am the bread that came down from heaven I am I am the the manna you know your your fathers they had manna and they died but I'm providing manna that you may have eternal life isn't it beautiful you, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood or you have no life in you and you know if it was if that you know uh, Protestants who we love so much. Um, but they so they say, well, you know, you got to take the Bible literally, or you know, well, what could be more literal than that? Because Jesus lost all of his followers except for exactly. a handful. Of them. He didn't send out a press release the next day and say, "Hey, you misunderstood." Exactly. I and which you know he the did word, in John two, which he did in John three, and which he did in John four, but he didn't do in John six. You know the and the word mana in the Old Testament, I believe it means what is it? Yeah, and that's what people keep asking about the Eucharist. Well, what is it? That's the question. It's the body, blood, the so it's the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Okay, Amen. so what's Amen. the next book? What's the next number book? two on that list is uh is everybody's favorite um counter-reformation saint, Saint Francis de Sales. Mm -hmm. When I read The Catholic Controversy by Francis de Sales, where he God used him to convert 72,000 Calvinists back to the Catholic faith. And I read in Francis de Sales his rebuttal and refutation of the Calvinism that had that had he considers them to be false shepherds, these Calvinists who had stolen the sheep. When I read his arguments against Calvinism, I thought, wait a minute, these are the same arguments that Calvinists are using today. And he answered them 400 years ago. And I I was absolutely stunned by the clarity, by how biblically grounded his answers were. How uh, I mean, he was known for being kind and gentle, but when it came to his logic, he was 
He, I mean, he did not spare the rod, so to speak. I mean, it's you, you got to read someone that thinks that um, Catholics have no way to answer these Calvinist arguments need to read Francis de Sales, the, the Catholic controversy. That was number two. That was a life changing book for me. But number one, I think this should be number one. And I'm I'm leaving aside the Bible for obvious reasons. That's obviously number one. But for my list here that brought me back to the Catholic Church, number one was the catechism, reading the catechism. Amen. Amen. Let yes. me tell you why. It's the because greatest. Now I know what Catholics actually believe. Yes. Not it's what, not, not like what, what the a Protestant priest says they believe. Or what a priest may say that's like <laughs> drifting into his own. You know, it. This. No. yes, the catechism no. is... Just a be oh, I love the cat. I read it, you know, every day. I love at least one one page a day. It's so beautiful. It's and it's saturated with grace. And you had um uh one of your writers on the long ride home describe the catechism. Yeah, uh, I think you had asked him what was what would be one word, and he said the humility. Dan Markham. Humility. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that what a beautiful way to describe the the spirit that runs through the catechism you mm -hmm. might add the word grace to that there it's just saturated but, with but grace. you know if, you know it has um yes it has a mm. it has a great humility it's 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 so many footnotes uh <laughs> leading you through scripture and leading you through the early church fathers and the saints and yep. the doctors of the church and so when you're done reading that and you know it's it's not like, well, you have to believe whatever the church says. No, it when you read, you go, oh, mm hmm, that's the scripture. Oh, yeah, and that makes total. Oh, well, then that must mean, oh, that's why that means this. That yeah. is, you know, every thread, it's like poetry. It's like, it's like, it's like the synapses of your mind are being reconnected. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way of putting it. That's, I'm reading through it and I'm saying, wow, this is beautiful. This is amazing. And then I'd run across something that was a little bit shocking to me. What do you mean Mary's the queen of heaven? Uh, you know, I brought a big question mark. And then and here I'd, it comes. No all way that's days. true. And then I would go find a book. I'd read Tim Staples or I'd read Scott Hahn or I'd read yes. Edward Shree's got a great book on Mary and and just say, OK, I'm going to investigate that. Uh, you and know, we, we, we got to take a break. We got to take a break. Another cliffhanger. And, and, and I. I We've been talking so much, I keep forgetting to remind people we're talking to Gerard Figarelli. Yep. He's a fresh new Catholic revert, just a little over a year now. And uh, so we love talking with him. Um, um, and we'll talk more about his story. Gerard, where can they find you? Midair Fortress on YouTube. Midair Fortress on YouTube. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different Tally Awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? A cowboy is a man of his word. Here are the words of a cosmic cowboy. Let your yes be yes, and let your no be no. That cowboy was Jesus Christ. A cowboy's word is his bond. A cowboy contract was bound by looking the other man in the eye and simply shaking his hand. 
The cowboy's word meant that he could be counted on to tell the truth, not mince words, shoot straight, and say what needed to be said, when it needed to be said, to who it needed to be said to. Be a man of your word. My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Men, we want you to go to schoolofmanliness.com and at least check us out. At least subscribe to our newsletter. Mama Bears, there's a place for you there too. And I'm speaking to the men now. You can become a part of the Man Cave, which is a, a non-Facebook community of men. We get together once a month by Zoom meetup, but we also have a monthly curriculum, about three years worth of curriculum right now that you can go through yourself. We go through it together. So there's, a, there's about a dozen lessons in each, for each month, and some's audio, some's video, some's written, some self-assessment. You can go through that yourself, but we also go through it on that Zoom call once a month. But what's really cool, what my hope in, is hope for this really was, and it now is happening, is the fathers are leading their sons through the mm -hmm. curriculum. And a lot of the curriculum is based on this new book of my 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Um, this book has been reaching number five of, in books for Christian men, and it really needs to get out there. It's a book that talks to men the way men talk with men. So uh, so we'd love to go to schoolofmanliness.com, become a member of the Man Cave and, and our School of Manliness. And there's a new... And exciting things there for the mama bears too. We just launched it in the last two weeks. Uh, but speaking of uh, where have all the cowboys gone? We got one right now. Texan uh, <laughs> is with us here, Gerard Figarelli, who is a revert. What is Midair Fortress? Not? Is that the name of your YouTube channel? That's the name of my YouTube channel, the Midair or Midair Fortress without the the. Is that something to do with with the church or being? What is that all about? What where does that come from? So when I was uh, when I was a young. Uh, after I had this conversion in a Baptist church, I, I knew, I thought I knew my theology. I thought I knew the Bible pretty well. I could explain it pretty well, but I didn't know if any of it was true. I hadn't yet really been philosophically grounded. And so I described my, uh, I had kind of a faith reason cleavage that was yes. actually put yes. back together by Thomas Aquinas. Yes. Absolutely. So I used to describe myself as having a midair fortress. I had like I, I had a the theological fortress built in midair. It wasn't grounded. Yeah, that's so and good. and so I just kind of adopted that name and then I just kind of stuck with it. Nobody had taken the domain, so I I went and, I ran with it. Midair fortress. So that would be more Plato kind of floating up, looking up at looking up where Aristotle is grounded. At the time, I didn't even know who Plato was. <laughs> <laughs> but you got, but you got Aquinas, man, in your, in, you know, eventually hang out with Aquinas enough. He's probably interceding for you and you're going to come back to the church. Amen. I used, I used to, when I first came back to the church, I would, as I was making my way back, I would sit on the beach here at mm -hmm. night, have a cigar. Cause it, it's a, it's a kind of a make, it's a solid, it's a mm -hmm. solitude maker. No one wants to be around yes. you. And I had my iPad and I just devoured. I would want to be around you. Yeah. And then, uh, then you find, well, what people call me and say, so what are you doing? Oh, I'm here, here at the beach hanging out with some friends. Well, who's there? Thomas Aquinas, Augustine, you know, yeah. that little book for beginners by Thomas Aquinas. Yeah. Okay. So tell us more. Tell us more now. Well, let's see. So I, I went through the, the, the five books. Now, uh, so again, it was Jimmy Aiken, the Bible is a Catholic book. Joe Heschmeyer, the early church is a Catholic church. Brent Petrie, 
Jesus and the Jewish roots of the Eucharist, Francis de Sales, the Catholic controversy, then the catechism. And that the reason why those five books is because those are usually the areas that a revert or convert has to address. The Bible, early church. When you find out, when you discover that the early church doesn't look anything like your evangelical non-denominational church, that your early church didn't have like, uh, you know, a smoke machines and a rock band and and have a memorial version of the Lord's Supper once a quarter. When you, Out of, when you with, grape, it, with grape with grape juice, with grape juice, I, I'll tell you one of the things that scared me, Bear, is when I read St. Ignatius, I know he's considered the red pill. In fact, I think you've had Joshua Charles on your show. Yes. And and uh, I should mention Joshua Charles's website is an incredible resource for anyone that just wants to get going on studying uh, the, the early fathers. But he he has a section in there about St. Ignatius, the red pill. When you read St. Ignatius, you got to remember he's writing in 107 AD. He's a he's a disciple of the, the Apostle John. He was a bishop of Antioch, and he's warning people. He's warning Christians about those that reject the Eucharistic realism. And he's he on his way to be martyred. Gnostics. He's on his he's on his way to be martyred. He's, he's on his way to be martyred. And he's, so he's saying dying, stay away he's from dying. That. He's dying for the words he's writing. Exactly. So what, did, what did he say? He said, stay away, be wary, stay away from those that hold heterodox opinions about the Eucharist. They do not, they do not accept the Eucharist as the real flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. I'm butchering it. That's a, a rough paraphrase. But we don't even know what heterodox means. Oh, you gotta Google. Google's it just your means it just means something it's other than the teaching. It's something other than the, the teaching of, of the church. In other words, yeah. he would have looked at me a year ago and said, "You're heterodox." He would have warned the flock against people like me, and that was shocking to me to right. know that I was in that much discord with those that that were learned at the feet of the disciples and gave their very lives for the gospel, mm -hmm. and they would have considered me outside the fold and actually a threat to stay away mm -hmm. from that scared me and made me realize so everybody's got to study the early church well, well tell me about your wife now while you were going through this huh. process so what, what know, is her you, first name what is her first name by the way I, my wife's first name is india everybody she, pray for blonde hair and blue eyes so it's, well, she the needs, name doesn't she, she needs prayer. She's married to gerard so everybody just pray for it no thank, well, yes, thank you india for for loving on this man so, well, tell, so tell us then. You've heard um, you've heard so many uh, reversion or conversion stories where either one of the spouses either never comes along or lags behind by a number of years. My wife and I have been, we went to that mass March 18th of last year together. My wife was not raised Catholic and she had a little bit more anti-Catholicism than I did. We both had that same experience and we've both been on this journey from that moment together lockstep in fact my wife really oh we've partnered with each other in miracle. beautiful ways because she reads things that are of tremendous interest to her and teaches me and then For i example read what what does she read she what loves the she loves uh detail about the liturgy about vestments about saints days about uh liturgical oh, feasts she and she's becoming an expert she loves you know i'm not that great of an expert but I had some of uh, some priest friends visit here. Father Bryce Lundgren, he's a cowboy from Wyoming, and Father Joseph Paddock, and they, and I have a lot of friends. They really live every day liturgically, so we're here and we've been surfing. Yeah. And Father Joe goes, "Oh my gosh, it's a feast day, and I haven't had ice cream." <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean that's that's <laughs> yeah. um, you know what I mean. It's like yeah. that. That's so wonderful that she's bringing because uh, I think um, there's a couple of young men, Adam Minahan and. Um, David Niles uh, with the Catholic Council of Men, the Catholic mm -hmm. Council of Men, who have written a book on living as husbands leaving your leading your family liturgically. So she's bringing that right into your home. It's beautiful. She's very detail oriented, and she's uh, so she has she's taught me a lot about. I mean, we'll go to we'll go to mass, we go to Latin mass every now and then, and she'll notice every particular difference about a Latin mass that will go on. I'll I'll be. I won't notice it necessarily, and mm -hmm. she'll notice it. So we've complimented each other really well. Oh, beautiful. Praise and Bear, I would be remiss if I did not mention the fact that since this, in this past year now, I have one granddaughter. I have five grown children. I have one grad, granddaughter. She has now been baptized in the church. And my youngest daughter and son-in-law, 
the my Cuban son-in-law that gave me yeah, this Cuban, beautiful yeah. guayavera. They're now yeah. they just were received into the church at the Easter vigil. So it's, what an did amazing you celebrate. Did you celebrate that with cigars? Oh, several. You did. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. You know, we have our we have our own line of cigars, the, the seven virtue cigars. Oh, I got every every one. one every every cigar has a has a label, the really good cigars has a label based on one of the seven virtues. It has an image of a in Latin, words in Latin and in English. And if you want to peel it, there's a ver, there's a verse in there uh, or an excerpt from one of my books on the virtues. So, yeah. Oh man. Ah. Uh, oh, you know and that's that's what I'm saying, man. That cigars are why I are led me deeply into my 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 reading and my study. I feel like there's a little a, bit of. Yeah, Father Christopher like, Pine talks to talks about cigars as uh, enhancing conviviality. So yes. you uh, you get men together and they you know it's they don't know what to do. You put a cigar in their hands <laughs> and suddenly they're talking theology. Yeah, you it's know? so and, true. You because you got to talk philosophy or yeah. you got to talk about. I always say, well, you have a cigar. What should we do with Waikiki? Uh, you know, we need to make our big business moves here now because we're smoking cigars. Let's make it into a. Uh, Miniature golf. That's what we need here. You know? <laughs> but yeah, so well, we've, we've been delighted to have you on the show. We love Grady Dyke. Um, yes. We introduced us. And I hope that we can stay in connection with each other now. And uh, love that. And, uh, and and what is the name of your your uh, podcast site on YouTube again? Mid-Air Fortress. Mid-Air, Mid-Air Fortress. Fortress. Starring Gerard Figuerelli. Starring myself for what it's worth. Subtitled Grady's Friend. Grady's friend. I love it may Grady. Be Grady. It may be Grady's only friend. No, we love Grady. We love Grady. He's a faithful, faithful brother. He's probably blushing right now if he's listening to this. We love you, Grady Dyke. <laughs> and we love the and we love the Catholic Crossbearers motorcycle ministry that he's such a big part of. We do. Uh, Gerard, uh, thank you for joining us. We have a, a, a thing we do here at the end of our show. In Hawaii, there's a word called aloha. Mm-hmm. Ha means breath, like when God breathed into Adam. He made him a living soul. And when Jesus said, my peace, I give you my peace. I live with you. And he breathed his Holy mm-hmm. Spirit. So may the breath of the Holy Spirit. Aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. Thank you.